Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1991 film Basket Case 3, The Progeny, uh, obviously by Frank Henelotter. And if you didn't know all of the uh, reviews for, well, the two reviews for the first Basket Case and the second Basket Case are currently on my channel already. I even created a playlist uh, just for Frank Henenlotter films so you can check out all the reviews of his stuff that I've done. So, uh, the second basket case came eight years after the first one, and then this one was just one year after the second one, so quick, quick turnaround, and um, I think that kind of adds to more of a continuity of look to it, obviously a continuity of the what, am I, what I'm calling the children, or other people in the film are calling it freaks, uh, which, by the way, it's very funny because in the review for the second basket case and for this one, very random, this is just what I happen to wear today, the shirt we are the mutant uprising which i didn't plan that out but you know what this really plays into especially basket case three because there really is a as people would say mutant uprising in the end of the film as they start taking over the airwaves but we'll talk about that more later anyway written and directed by frank hennenlotter of course who's done brain damage frankenhooker bad biology and then documentaries herschel gordon lewis the godfather of gore Chasing Banksy and Boiled Angels, the Di uh, the Trial of Mike Diana. Obviously, for the third film in a row of these, Kevin Van Hintenrick as Dwayne Bradley is in it. Love him in this film. Love him, love him, love him in this film. Um, I, and I do feel like his his acting is a certain way. I wouldn't say he's a like good actor, but you do see change from the first movie to the third movie with him. He does become way more comfortable with the material, way more comfortable with the character. It does seem like he settles in more as the films go on, and he does become a better actor as time goes on. So, you know, you'd probably assume that with, you know, getting more uh, practice at that role, and it does show. Uh, and, I mean, honestly... His acting is my fate is probably my favorite part of all of the films, to be honest. In the first one, because it's so laughably bad, but then in the second and third ones, because it feels familiar. Like I've already fallen in love with it from the first one, so that when he comes back in the second one and the third one, even though he's gotten to be more a better actor, he still has that certain Kevin Van Hintenrake style. Uh and I mean Frank Hennenlotter style too, because of the way the character's written and the acting that he asks for for the films. Uh, even though this is the final Basket Case film, apparently Henenlotter has said that he could see doing a fourth one. Um, if that ever happened, I'm sure I would check it out, but I don't think I'd be like super excited because honestly with this, and you'll see with my final rating on this, uh, it's my least favorite of the three. It is, you know, like with a lot of films that have multiples to them, uh, a lot of franchises have multiples to them. It's diminishing returns as it goes down. Because one of my biggest things with this film in particular, it doesn't really feel like the story progresses. Obviously, in the first basket case, there's plenty of story because everything's brand new to us, so we get everything. Second film, there's more story. There's more development between not only the psychic abilities between Dwayne and Belial, but their relationship and... A lot of other stuff you know there's plenty of new things happening in that one so with this one it feels kind of stagnant to a degree I know there's stuff that happens and the big change obviously being Belial having babies and then his you know baby mama dying it's um there is stuff happening but it doesn't feel like the overall story for Basket Case is really moving anywhere except for maybe the reconciling that goes on between Belial and Dwayne. But even then, it, that is so slow, and it's so like off and on, like, oh, will they reconcile, won't they? Uh, it just doesn't feel like they're doing much for the overall story. So that's one of the big things that kind of like made me like, eh, not as interested. But that said, there's still things I enjoyed with the film, obviously. Uh, when, I was, when I first started watching, I was like, really? You're going to start with the sex scene from the second one? That's such a, like I said, it's such a weird thing to see. It's a little bit creepy. It's a little bit disgusting. It's a little bit funny. It's all of those things. And I think Hen and Lauder's really good at capturing that mixture. It's not all creepy, all scary, all disgusting, or, in, or all funny. He just, he's good at getting that together. And that's actually seen in a lot of the um, practical effects the, the costuming for the children, uh, you know, Granny Ruth's children. So 
Uh, a lot of them, they're, they're kind of funny looking, a little cartoonish, uh, but they're also kind of scary, kind of creepy, kind of gross, you know, all those things. And so I like the fusion of that aesthetic. Like I said with the last review for Basket Case 2, I hate the fact that they pull so much from the first film into this film as well. Now, now you've had the backstory scene of the separation surgery in the first film, the second film, and the third film. They put them in all of them. There is absolutely no reason for that. Another thing that there's absolutely no reason for was what they did in the second one, which was playing a decent portion of the very end of the first film to start the second film. You don't need that. If people saw Basket Case 1, they remember what happened going into 2, and if they saw 2, they remember what happened going into 3. So I just don't understand that choice. It's such a weird choice, and I don't like it. That kind of takes me out of the film in the beginning. Obviously, there's stuff to re-engage me, but initially, I don't like that. Um, so at this point, Dwayne is basically a prisoner in something that kind of seems like his own personal hell, especially based off the events of the end of the second film, because he's trying to get away. At that point, he's had it. He needs to get away from Belial and everyone like Belial, but, and then that's when he freaks out and sews him back to him. But then, you know, obviously he's in a straitjacket and he's basically being held prisoner there. He spends a good amount of time during the film trying to get away, finally, until realizing, you know, this is kind of where he needs to be. He needs to reconcile with Belial, and, you know, things basically get patched up. But initially, it is kind of interesting that, like, he's stuck again. Like, it's this continual he's stuck thing. I think I would have liked if maybe he got away a little bit, and then they, you know, kind of, he found his way back on his own. But then I guess you don't get as much of the children which I feel like is a major focus of the second and third film is we have more money, we have these great practical effects, let's try and put them in as many scenes as possible, just look at these children, these freaks, these mutants, whatever you want to end up calling them, just look at them. So, like, I get it, but to some degree, like, maybe a little more focus on story, just saying. Because that's the thing with the first basket case, is it had a good mix of stuff. Um... As expected, more children are introduced, so I did like that. More of Granny Ruth's children, I did like that. Uh, and I, I like the fact that they end up going on this trip because they're leaving home, and you're like, oh, what, what can they get up to? So, you know, that kind of creates a level of excitement for seeing where we're going with it. Uh, what's with the song, the personality song on the bus, and then playing it at the end of the film during the credits? I didn't get that. Like, it seems too over the top. It seems too too weird. Um, I could definitely do without it. <laughs> uh, but the bus trip thing is, is a good idea. Um, they were in the last one, and I kind of forgot to talk about it a little bit, but all the, the little noises that they have for each individual one of Granny Ruth's children are so good. Like, the, the noise designs, the sound design for it with all of these individuals is great. Um, it gives a, a certain personality and a certain voice to each one of them, and they're different. And I really like that about it. It's a good attention to detail. Um, mm, 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 mm. I was very intrigued to find out how Little Hal would end up fitting into this film. Although then, once Little Hal was really in the film, I realized I hate Little Hal. Um, terrible acting, terrible character, very, very annoying. Especially the scene where the birth is happening of the 12 Belial babies. And he just keeps talking about every single one that comes out. And he's like, oh, you know, it's twins. Oh, it's triplets. Oh, it's... Qu and making rhymes about it. Like, that scene is A, way too long. And B, all the rhyming is so over the top and so annoying and not funny. And the actor who was handling the character of Little Hal was not even, like, bad fun. He was just bad, bad, and bad annoying. And I don't know if that has, if that's the way he was written and Hen and Lauder wanted him, or if that's the way the actor did it, or a combination of the both. But I hated Little Hal in this. And in the end, Little Hal doesn't even really matter. You know, like, except for building the suit, I guess that's the main reason Little Hal is really there, is to build that, that you know, mech suit for Belial, which is cool. It is cool. Um, but, you know. Other than that, I hated Little Hal. And, like, his deformities, like, they don't even look good. 
just the fact that he's like big doesn't mean it's cool like he just he just doesn't look good especially not in comparison to all of you know granny Roos children i'm just saying uh the water breaking scene real quick was pretty funny that's less of water breaking and more of a water main breaking i know it's kind of kind of corny but i thought it was a little bit funny when it occurred to me um i and just like in basket case two Dwayne ends up throwing himself at the first normal looking female that he sees here he is making yet another mistake with yet another woman throwing himself at Opal the sheriff's daughter just like he was throwing himself at Susan it seems like because he's not used to you know living a normal life and interacting with people he just is doomed to always throw himself at the first normal looking female he sees uh, I just found that kind of funny I like how little Hal could care less that his father was viciously attacked. That's another thing. They go and get little Hal to help out with the birth after Hal, I guess Big, I'll just call him Big Hal, uh, Big Hal, uh, after Big Hal was attacked. And like, it's like nothing happened. Like no acknowledgement from little Hal that his father was attacked, which I'm like, you gotta, you gotta address that to some degree. I mean, come on. Um, the other thing is when Belial's brought in and, when the birth is happening like it looks like his reaction is this mix of like oh my god what did i get into and like like terrified and disinterested at the same time and it's kind of like i mean i get it because you know i don't want to have anything to do with kids too let alone 12 of them but <laughs> i thought it was kind of funny that he's just like Ugh. like it looks like his own personal help basically so maybe he was starting to figure out what Dwayne was feeling <laughs> Um, nothing that the cops did, their whole plan about getting the million dollars for getting Dwayne, well, just getting Belial, basically, uh, none of that plan really made sense. They made a lot of dumb choices and did dumb things, and I feel like that whole aspect of, like, the cops trying to, you know, kidnap Belial or kill Belial either way, uh, I felt like that whole plot aspect was very half-baked and, and not really worked out all that well. Should have taken some more time with it because they could have come up with it in a much better way uh just didn't like it opal as a dominatrix was very out of left field but i loved how Dwayne ended up reacting to it like his whole like uh 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 and like backing up made for a very good funny funny scene so i did enjoy that uh it's weird because the setup of the sheriff is that he's actually sympathetic to little hal and his situation so i didn't really get why he then turns into such like a ter such like a bigot basically towards granny Ruth's children i don't know it's weird maybe it's because of just what the other police said but it seems like he's more sympathetic in the beginning and, and then he goes away from that uh i do love the scene of belial when he comes in and attacks the police station and he squeezes the dude's neck so much that like his eyes and everything pops out of his head that looks great awesome special effects or practical effects and then also when he's biting the guy's face and then rips his head off by biting his face and pulling insane strength once again we've seen it before from Blyal, and it's amazing in this film uncle Dwayne didn't really seem to care when opal got shot and then she fell on the one baby Blyal. he literally saw it happen and was like oh oops or like that something to the to, to the degree of like oh that's not good you know so it was just kind of funny that he was just like, I don't care. Now, because of the psychic link between Dwayne and Belial that had been established quite a few times with the films, I don't understand why Dwayne didn't know that Belial was shot when they were getting out of, out of the police station. That didn't make any sense. The fact that it's like a shock to him that he got shot. We've seen before where when something happens to one of them or something ex extreme is going on emotionally or physically, like they they know like they can feel it so that i feel like that was a slip up with the script a little bit overlooked they've shown they had shown so much in the movies that when the um belial mech is used to go after the the first two cops you feel really cheated and kind of upset that you don't you only see the arm of it but then finally they give you the payoff when there's a big showdown with the sheriff and then I was just like, this is awesome. I'm very happy with the way this looks. Seeing Belial like moving that mech suit was super, super cool. And it reminded me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Krang, how he had his little suit and he was in the 
the, similar design. You know what I'm saying, people. Um, I like that Beverly Bonner shows up in this again. That's one of the big things to note about Frank Henenlotter films is that Beverly Bonner always shows up in the film, even in, you know, small roles. In this one, she was the cashier at the fast food restaurant when the family, when the uh, Granny Ruth and her family show up and they just start, you know, terrorizing everyone and eating all their food, which, you know, why was she ordering food then if they were just eating everyone else's food? It's kind of, you know, a thing. Uh, so the babies end up being inf inherently feral and wanting to eat people, like Belial, I guess, just because Belial's the only parent alive. That's kind of a weird thing to me, just because I thought they'd be more of a neutral creature or person or whatever you want to call them. I thought they'd be more neutral and more like able to be molded as they grew up, because it seems that the mother was actually very docile and not at all like Belial. Um, except for the moment where, you know, the police bust in and she starts to, you know, act like she's going to attack them. But, you know, that's ob that's self-defense. So that's a different situation. So I just thought it was a little bit weird that the babies would just naturally attack, especially because they're so young. I, I don't know. It was, a little, it was a little weird. But, you know, it plays well for the finish of the film. And now Granny Ruth, at the very end of the film, when the whole family busts into what is uh, a veiled attempt at showing a Geraldo Rivera show, uh, they become, she's basically turned her family into a terrorist organization. Like, that's literally what she's doing, is like busting in and terrorizing people. They did it at the restaurant as well. So it's gone from, in the second film, being this family of just like creating a loving environment and caring and everything, and over time has just changed into, now we're a terrorist group and we're coming to your town and we're taking you down. So I was just like, okay. So really, in the end, other than the baby Belial's, like I was saying, this film doesn't really move the overall story a whole lot. Uh, it's just kind of an expansion on the second film. It's it's just basically like the next hour and a half of what is Basket Case 2. So it's not really another chapter. It's just a continuation of the second one, really. So I'm sure some people love that about it. There are things I did like about that because, you know, you saw more of the children and you saw... You saw the same ones that were in the second one more, which is always fun. Uh, and you get, you know, the violence that you're looking for, the mech suit. You know, there's a lot of good stuff in this, but there's stuff that I didn't like about it, obviously. So, rating this two ways. Uh, the first way, with five stars possible, with half stars in play, as, as a film film, I'm going to give it a two-star rating because there's some achievements in there. But as a so-bad-it's-good film, I'm going to have to go ahead and give it a... I'm between a three and three and a half because it's almost on par with the second one. Um, I'll give, you know, I'll give it a three and a half. I think it's, I think it's pretty comparable to the second one as far as a so bad it's good film. Um, if I gave quarter stars, I'd drop it just a quarter to 3.25, but I think it makes sense to put it at 3.5 with the second one. So those are my feelings on Basket Case 3, The Progeny. Uh, do what you want to do, make your comments down here, your thoughts on it, let's get nerdy about it, um, and, you know, maybe one day there will be a fourth basket case, in which case, what would you want to see for that fourth basket case? The baby Belial's grown up, and how they deal with that, uh, maybe Belial and, uh, Dwayne being dual parents to all these 11, now 11 baby Belial's, I don't know. Anyway, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button if you like this video or any video that I've ever done. That's your best way to repay me, and it literally takes you a second, so it's very painless, and it does mean a lot to me personally, so I would really appreciate that. Also, hit the subscribe button because that way you know anytime I'm putting up a new review or unboxing or doing a live stream, so I would appreciate that. Um, but regardless, thanks for uh, taking your time to check this video out, and until next time, keep it brutal.